into the third section in our The Gospel Matters sermon series. And in this passage, we're looking at what it means for us to be family. We've already seen what it means for us to be disciples of Jesus, uh, those who have been chosen by him. We are to continue in him. Last week, we looked at what it means for us to be a redeemed people. We have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in Christ. And we are to live for the praise of God's glory as a redeemed people. And today we're looking at 1 John chapter 3 and what it means for us to be a family, disciples of Jesus who live as a redeemed family. As always, I encourage you just to take some time to read through this passage, to familiarize yourself with what's going on. Look out for repeated ideas, or repeated themes, words, or put question marks down where you may have questions. Try and get your head around what John is teaching us in this passage. Spend some time praying that God would open your eyes to see wonderful things about who he is and what he's done for us in Jesus. And as always, I'm just going to highlight a few of the things that I've seen in this passage to help you to understand it and hopefully to teach it well to others. Well, this letter is written by the same John who wrote the Gospel of John. He was one of Jesus' disciples. This is probably written about 50 or more years after Jesus' death and resurrection. Um, and ascension into heaven and life was difficult for God's people they were being persecuted but also there was false teaching coming in so John wrote this to encourage his readers if you go and look at uh, chapter 5 verse 13 John gives his purpose statement I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life John wants them to know the truth and to live in the light of that truth So we see this phrase, this is how we know. So John wants us to know for sure some important truths. And the focus of this uh, few verses is how you know who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. So we see he speaks of the children of God. Um, He speaks of them as brothers and sisters in Christ. Again, starts children of God, ends with children, um, focusing in on what it means for us to be uh, brothers and sisters. So this is all family language. As God's children, uh, we have been adopted, what we saw in Ephesians chapter 1 last week. And as God's adopted children, uh, we are now family, brothers and sisters in Christ. And he contrasts uh, the children of God with the children of the devil those who belong to the evil one. And the defining mark that we see of children of God in this section is their love for each other. They love one another. We see this one another language or each other. So throughout this section we see um, that children of God are called to love each other So how do we know who the children of God are? We know it by their love for each other. And then uh, John goes on to show what love isn't. And he points to Cain uh, and shows how Cain was a murderer. And he links uh, that murder in with hate. So what is love not? Well, don't be like Cain who murdered his brother. But then... John shows that he's not just talking about physical murder here because he says anyone who hates a brother or sister is a murderer. So just as Jesus did in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, uh, verse 22, if you want to go and have a look at that. Matthew 5, 22. We see that Jesus also showed that um, if you hate a brother or sister or you hate someone in your heart, that heart response is as good as murdering that person and John is saying we are to be as children of God characterized by love which means that we aren't murderers that we aren't hating brothers or sisters which is murdering them in our hearts um, because you know that no murderer has eternal life residing in them so John is is saying that if you hate a brother or sister it puts question marks whether you have eternal life in you it's putting question marks over whether you are indeed a child of God 
So we mustn't be marked by hate, um, murder in our hearts, but rather by love. So this is how you know who children of God are. They love each other. This is what love isn't. And then he shows us what love is. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. So John points to the greatest display of love. And you can go and read up more about this in John's Gospel, uh, chapter 15, verse 12 to 14, where we see Jesus himself says, this is love. Um, and he says that it is to lay down your life for your brother. And John, at that moment, when he heard Jesus saying those words on the night before he went to the cross, he wouldn't have realized the gravity of that. But the next day, as he saw Jesus dying for the sins of the world, then he would have realized what love truly is. And that's why he can write. We know what love is. Jesus Christ laid his life down for us. John was there. He saw it. And then he says, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. So we are called to this self-sacrificial love. An other person-centered love. And John goes from this massive display of love being willing to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters to bringing it way down to the more mundane, talking about the way that we use our material possessions. We want to use them in such a way that we can show God's love to people. So this then hits our, our bank accounts and our possessions, the way that we use them shows that we love our brothers and sisters in Christ. And then John hits this finally in verse 18. Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. Actions and truth. So this is not a, a love that doesn't act. It is a love that shows in tangible ways a love to one another. When John speaks about truth here, um, he's probably an idiom referring to actually or really. So really, actually show this love in action. But all of this act of love is linked, is flows from the love that Jesus Christ showed to us in redeeming us. We are a redeemed people. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us to make us his children, God's children, brothers and sisters in Christ. And because of what Jesus has done for us, flowing out of that great love that he has lavished on us we love one another by being willing to lay down our lives so that is a huge display of love but it also comes down to the actions and truth in the everyday stuff of life love tangibly loving our brothers and sisters in real ways now we are called to love all of our brothers and sisters like this but the reality is we're not going to be able to love everyone in our bigger church community in this sort of way and so just as C.S. Lewis once said loving everyone in general may be an excuse for loving nobody in particular we do need to pray that God would help us to love a particular people a smaller group of people with this actions and truth uh, sort of love so really tangibly showing uh, self-sacrificial love in action to a smaller group of people. So I encourage you to, to pray for that smaller group of people, uh, just as Jesus had a smaller group of disciples who he significantly impacted and shared his life with. So we too should be praying for a smaller group of folk who we can significantly love and impact in response to how Jesus has loved us we love these people. And then we pray that this love will echo out from us to many others. And that uh, we will have opportunity as God's children, as brothers and sisters in Christ, to love in real, real ways uh, these blood-brought children of God. So as you dig in further, I really do encourage you to, to think about tangible ways that this impacts you, who you can really show love to, um, in a way that will be shown through our material possessions, in actions and in truth. 
And then I encourage you to, as you teach this to others, to, to really challenge people to think about how we can love each other. Because this is how we know who the children of God are. By our love. Because we love each other. And this is how we know what love is. We look to Jesus. We look to what he did to redeem us, to buy us back, to make us disciples of Jesus. And then in response to what he has done, we lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. In tangible, everyday, in the everyday stuff of life. And as we do this, God is greatly glorified through us. And our family are greatly blessed by us. So let's be praying that all of us would be these overflowing with love brothers and sisters in Christ. God bless as you dig into this wonderful passage further.